Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Let us talk about real love. First John 4, 19-21, we read, We love him because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and their sister. You have heard all there is to know about love, right? Well, we are going to have one more talk about love and we are going to avoid sugar coating. Let us keep it real because there is a thing about love that we must acknowledge. What the world needs now is love, and I don't mean to be trite. We need love, and I strongly suspect that we can make a difference if each one of us tries to love the God way. We first of all must acknowledge what we are up against when we talk about loving people. I'm amazed at stories of some horrible divorce between two persons who at one time claimed to love each other enough to have got married, to build a family, to raise a home, and something happened, and all of that love turned into hate, and lives are destroyed. Here comes God, the author of love, Mr. Love himself, and he doesn't make a suggestion. Rather, he elevates it to a command that we love our brothers and sisters. That is easier said than done. It is hard to love someone who abuses you, someone who drags your name in the mud, someone who is always taking and never giving. It is hard to love a spouse who takes your best attributes for granted with no hint of gratitude. It is hard to love a spouse who is selfish and hardly ever looks out for you. So why does God demand of us to love such persons? Let us take it outside the home and let us go into the world of religion. Maybe one of the most vulnerable populations is the church community, because every group presents itself as the real deal. What that does is that it sets us up to love less people of opposing views. History is full of the vicious wars between religious groups and the murderous campaigns that have been, that have been waged in the name of religion. Where is the love for the other person who has another belief system? Then when there was the emergence of what we now know as Protestantism, our forefathers hid behind a coat of religiosity while engaging in the most vitriolic entanglements, causing untold damage between people who say they believe in God. And we could go on and on as religious folks seem to promote their superiority, and this is played out in hate and jealousy. And yet they claim to serve a God who commands them to love each other, or do they? Surely he has to make exceptions because we have the right theology and everyone is blasphemous and enemy of the truth. Everyone else. Politics is the breeding ground for anything but love. Sure, there will be opposing views and perspectives on governing the community, and everybody, rightly so, is of the conviction that their political ideology is the best. What do we see in reality? Political victimization, widespread corruption in the distribution of spoils and positions, and the horrendous crave for power at the expense of hurting and killing each other. And while those who seek to represent us are fighting against each other, In a formal way, the supporters are busy killing each other in loyalty to an ideology rather than caring for the other person, regardless of differences. No wonder one singer asks, what's love got to do with it? And the answer is, love has everything to do with it. God has never revised his demand for us to love each other. He was most displeased when Cain killed his brother. And for what? His brother did the right thing and he did the wrong thing and he was mad because God rejected his sacrifice. And you kill your brother for that? Give me a break, Cain. Give me a break, every Cain in the church community who allowed jealousy and greed to consume you and cause you to behave negatively towards others in your own faith community. The spirit of Cain is active among many of us and although we might not kill each other, we do the symbolic We practice hate for each other and dress it up in a sophisticated manner that is outright hypocrisy. God was displeased with Cain then, and God is displeased with those who represent Cain in our daily lives today. 
God is opposed to the enemy of love because he is love and anything that opposes or contradicts love is of the devil. God says that we must shun the very appearance of evil and one active appearance of evil is failing to love one's brother and sister. To love like how God expects us to love means that one has to be an active follower of Jesus Christ. It is a relationship that we experience true love and out of that we are challenged to love. God models love. He gave his son to die for a world that had sinned against him and chosen to follow the lead of the devil. God shows his love for us daily in many ways. This God is not unreasonable, but he teaches us that we are able to love when we are in relationship with him and his Holy Spirit teaches us how to love. That is what he asks of us, knowing full well that we are incapable of loving on our own, and so he asks us to learn from him. This is love that persuades you to love the person who has done you wrong. This is love when you are able to forgive someone who has hurt you. This is love when you are able to go out of your comfort zone and show love to the ones who least deserve it. Love one another, God says. If you have any thoughts or questions on the matter of loving your brother, then send me an email and your concerns to friendofclyde at gmail.com.